a full-time artist, mother of two, and an art teacher. Anne Kostecki is an avid learner who taught herself web design, photography, calligraphy, gouache painting, six different foreign languages, yoga, and book binding. You can see more of Ian's work at nkostecki.com, but for now, please join us as we rant about the origin of art and its role in the future, how art is present in the animal world, why babies and toddlers need art for a healthy development, and why you shouldn't trust your brain when painting. Want to be part of the show? Then send in your questions or topics you'd like to see covered to our email at hello at etrelab.com. If you send us an audio recording, we might include it in the episode. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etre, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guests. So Ian, thank you for being in the show. Thank you for having me. I, I have a lot of... I have a lot of questions I want to ask you. I'm curious about many things. But first off, I was ha having a look at your website and you said that you started painting when you were about five, right? Yes. So, well, like most children, I loved creating things and I loved painting and drawing. Um, I just uh, stuck with it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I got a lot of positive feedback from my friends and like my family, they, they were like, Oh, you, you drew that really well. Like that looks great. Mm -hmm. And then like, I, it kept inspiring me to keep, keep trying and mm -hmm. keep practicing. So I think that really helped me. And, um, I think another huge, um, help was that when I was around 14, I went and, um, to a professional artist and had art lessons Wow. and that, um, with a group of other students, like around my age. And so it was really great to like, see other artists and like we were all like you know teenagers and some of them were younger and it just really helped me like dedicate time to practice and learn a lot of different techniques so that makes a lot of sense and I probably should wait and save the run for later but I don't think I'm able so I'd like to I'd like to figure out I like to understand why you were so drawn to art why did that matter so much to you as a child do you have any recollection Well, I think it's partly because I had a really active imagination. Mm -hmm. I really liked reading a lot. I spent a lot of time in the library. I liked books about like fairy tales and fantasy. And I liked drawing, you know, dragons and unicorns and rainbows and stuff. And I just really like it let me, I think as a child, it let me like explore my imagination mm -hmm. and kind of just... I don't know. Like, I felt like with my friends too, if they, if they wanted me to draw something, like they couldn't quite articulate what it was. I felt like I was kind of a conduit for their oh. imaginations too. Like I, what I used to do actually when I was in middle school is, do you remember the gel pen craze? Yes. I don't know if it's worldwide, but yeah. Yeah. So it was like, in Portugal. Gel pens were such a thing for middle school girls for yeah. me. <laughs> So like we would decorate our notebooks mm -hmm. and I used to tattoo my arm with it. I don't know if it's non-toxic, by the way. I don't <laughs> recommend everyone go out with my gel pens and draw on their arms. But that's what I did. And um, it was fun because my friends would be like, oh, I want like a snake or a, a horse or something. And I would draw on them for them. And it was like, you know, it was kind of like being a tattoo artist. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that's amazing. I've never seen anyone doing tattoos with gel pens and I had my fair share of gel pens when I was in middle school. This is news to me. Yeah, I like I said, I am not sure that it's <laughs> yeah. not, it's not, not recommended. a safe thing to do, but mm -hmm. I enjoyed it and I'm fine and I'm here today, but like You know, I can't, I can't recommend anyone do this. <laughs> But that's, I recommend that's, doing it on paper. <laughs> that is very interesting. And I like what you said about um, letting your imagination fly and bringing worlds to life and stuff like that. I can, I can relate to that because I was a very artsy child as well when I was a kid. And I also, mm -hmm. just like you, I had a lot of encouragement from my family to draw more. And when I was 10 and I was in uh, starting middle school, my visual arts teacher really gave me a very kind comment about art and I think that's when something clicked in my brain and I wanted to pursue it even further and that's when I became very obsessed with art 
So yeah, I think there's a lot to say about how positive encouragement dictates a path that a child ends up taking in life. You're a mother of two, so I would like to know your thoughts about that. Yeah, I I think that it's really important, like especially since I see my kids, my older kid, because she's two more so, like they really, really love to create things, whether it's with blocks or Legos mm -hmm. or drawing or any whatever, or even mud outside. They just like <laughs> to create things. And it's like, it's a human urge, I guess. Yeah. And I think it's like, it's important to encourage kids because they're like, I'm sure you, I'm, I'm sure other people feel this way, but I feel like there's so many talents that we never explore because mm -hmm. there's like that first person who's like, you're not good at that, or you shouldn't do that, or that's a waste labeling, of your time. Labeling, immediately yeah. labeling and discouraging and... Yes. And like, I had that same problem with math is that mm -hmm. I had teachers that weren't very encouraging and I just was like, well, I don't like math and I'm just not going to do it. And you're getting in your head. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, I, I just got good at it. And then when I went to grad school, I got, went to grad school and I got an MBA. I had to take like an introductory math class mm -hmm. and I did really, really well, and my professor pointed out that I was doing well and that I was learning quickly, and then I also happened to get the best grade in my class in statistics, oh. which is very heavily math-based, and I really enjoyed doing it, and I realized it was because, like, I started gaining more confidence in it. Like, wow. I was, like, you know, it's just that first step where I'm like, okay, I did well, I'm going to keep trying, and so I can do better, and, like, I kind of have a competitiveness to my <laughs> <so>. <laughs> So like great think, competitive let's go for it yeah exactly like my husband and i are very competitive whenever we'd play <laughs> squash or like <laughs> volleyball like we would compete with each other and like i think um just having like a goal or or some sort of like i want to beat my last score i want to do better yeah. i want to like that really helps and with even with art especially like you can draw like a really great leaf and be like, I'm really proud of this. But then you have to think to yourself, like, can I do it better next time? Or like that kind of that Healthy kind of thing that on each other. Yeah. Like like that I think is what what's great and terrible about art because there's no like end goal. Like mm -hmm. there's no like perfect piece. There's no like I've reached the apex of yeah. art. Yeah. You're always challenging yourself. So Yeah. I rant That's about it. that, but before I dive before I open that kind of worms, oh my god, I'm enjoying this conversation so much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> about math and you know it it's widely said that artists are not good at math which i highly disagree with that statement because everybody is different and i know a, bu a bunch of artists who were software engineer first or they are software engineers and they're great at math so anyway when i was a kid in, in primary school so between age six and nine i loved math time because my teacher used to give me equations in recycled paper and the touch was so different and it smelled so different. I liked the paper oh so much. I love those equations. I love it. So yeah. It's a See, that encouraged you to keep keep practicing math or doing, you know, equations or uh, you know, just solving problems. Yeah, and so. it's like so that leads me to think when we had the art time, at least here, it was like now go and have fun exploring and there's nothing wrong yeah. and we just had fun exploring and everything was fine so i think there's a lot to say about how art can be seen as a very positive thing and a chillax thing and not a real job thing because since we were kids we were seeing art as free time and oh, while yeah. math is right or wrong science is right or wrong and yeah i, I don't know it's just a thought I, I totally agree. I think since, exactly, since math, there's an answer. Mm -hmm. And there's a right answer, and then there's a bunch of wrong answers. It's not the same with art. And that's mm -hmm. why, and, and and people treat it like a therapeutic thing. Like, yeah. art. there's art therapy, there's music therapy, there's, mm -hmm. like, dance therapy. It's like, you're supposed to, like, just, it's supposed to be a cathartic experience mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. art. And I think a little bit of, some problems people have when they see art as a career is they're like, well, I do that on the weekends for fun and like, Which you is know, fine, you know, well, it's fine if you're fine. a hobbyist. Yeah, it's totally, totally fine if you're a hobbyist and it's actually great if you're a hobbyist, but like, I don't think it's, it's any, there's no room to like disparage it as a career. Like mm -hmm. I have had that my entire life. I was just having a conversation with my husband about this. Like 
people like it's, I've had people who are not who don't know me well who meet me for the first time and they're like oh you're going to college for art or you're you're an artist oh that's yeah. fun and it's kind of fun like, it's, like, it's a lot of work a bit, and yeah. like oh that's that's cute or whatever and <clears> then <throat> like I show them my portfolio and they're like oh okay like I take it seriously you know what I mean like um but it's there's room for everyone to to do what they want to do and if someone can make a career out of it like I I find it so sad when people disparage other people's careers like yeah. like I've heard, I I know people who are scientists doctors and that is great and great doctors lawyers oh my god who pinnacle yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing absolutely. against them we need them you know but we also need yeah. art but like at the same time yeah I know I was a lot of the people a lot of the customers I find they they're people who aren't professional artists and they're like I love this this just helps me relax like just like to see a painting or whatever yeah. and like it's it has its it has its uses and like it's it's a yeah. legit career and if someone I mean yeah you do have to work really really hard it's just like if you want to be a singer or a dancer you exactly. have to work really, really hard to stand out Exactly. So. I was just thinking about that, like being a professional dancer. It's insane. First off, yeah. it's something so physical. If something happens to you, knock on wood. I mean, what yeah, happens to your career? Like being a, like, you know, it's not just in Portugal. It's being a soccer player is the the profession. If you're a, sp a professional sportsman, then it's soccer. Everything else is like second rate or third rate, which I think it's very unfair to every other sports. You know, if if you're hurt your leg while playing soccer. Well, there goes your career. But if you yeah. hurt your leg while being a professional dancer, ice skater, there goes your career as well. Same thing with our hands as artists. There goes our career. But I, I know. Told... I had a paranoia about that. <laughs> Me Just too. Side note, I've had paranoia about hurting my eyes. Mm -hmm. And I've had a paranoia about hurting my hand. <laughs> so Dangerous, like... dangerous skills, yeah. dangerous jobs. Yeah, yeah. and... Uh, I mean, I danced as a hobby and I loved it and eventually became bored of it and got out and it's totally fine. But, you know, professional dancers don't have that luxury. Same thing as professional artists don't have the luxury of just quitting. If I mean, you can always quit and start something new. You're never too late for that. But, you know, it's yeah. a different path. Okay. Yeah. So going back to the thread of kids. Um, yes. And what you, we were in again, just a little bit of rent on art not being essential. I mean, people don't. Usually a lot of people do not understand how going to art school might be a, a thing until maybe they realize without artists, there are no movies. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. It's not just actors and camera. Um, but as a mother of two kids, so you have a baby. How old is the baby? He is seven or eight weeks he's gonna be eight weeks i guess oh my god yeah. i had no idea he was so young i thought he was like yeah. a couple of months older than my own oh my god yeah. congratulations again thank you. um and you're here with me thank you for your time i know how hard it is and uh and you have your toddler two-year-old toddler and growing up and now that we just rented a little bit about how art might be you know crucial to everybody's um <clears throat> growth emotionally artistically i mean can you expand a little bit about that? I mean, for your kids, how would you go about getting art into their lives and why do you think that matters? Um, so, so far, I'm probably going to have to just speak about my older kid because my mm -hmm. younger one is mm -hmm. so young. It's too young. But uh, she has, it is kind of amazing. As soon as she could hold a crayon, she was interested in drawing. And I don't know if it's huh. something intrinsic to who she is or if because she's seen me paint and draw before. But she, it was, she held it correctly the first, like, she's held it correctly. I've never had to show her how to help hold a crayon or a pencil. It's kind of amazing. Wow. And she's had an instinct to want to color in coloring books, draw, even just take a pen or a pencil if I'm making a grocery list and just, like, scribble. Mm -hmm. So I always, when I have an opportunity, I just let her draw whatever she wants, color whatever she wants, if it's not on the furniture, of course. Or the <laughs> but, um... I feel like, you know, she's it, not just a cathartic experience, but she's learning motor skills. Mm -hmm. She's doing something fun. It's entertaining for her. Like she's, she's really doing well with it. And so usually w when I bring it into her life, I, it's mostly coloring and coloring books, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally I let her, I have a dry erase board 
She loves this. Draw on the dry erase board, erase it, draw a new picture. And she usually likes, actually, the funny thing she loves to do is watch me draw and then say what it is. Like, I'll draw an elephant. She'll be like, that's an elephant. She'll be excited about that. And like, um, and honestly, last weekend, I, I started a 3D painting project with her. I had a ceramic haunted house for Halloween. And we painted it a metallic orange and she did so well. I was so proud of her. I, I put a smock on her and I was like ready for it to be a total mess, but she painted the whole thing orange and it really wasn't that bad. And I was kind of amazed. So- wow. Well, I'm, I'm sure she did better than I did. I'm a mess every time my whole paints. Well, I got it like all over my arms and like she got it all in the smock and on the table, but like it could have been like in her hair, in her mouth. Mm-hmm. It could have been anywhere. So, but it like, was not. Wow. I, I was impressed. So I think it's important because, you know, she, not only creativity, creatively for her creativity or whatever, but like she'll be able to express herself more clearly. And I think it's kind of connected too because she's very good at communicating. She's still, she's doing f- full sentences with almost everything now. Mm-hmm. And I think like when she's, when she's creating something and drawing and painting, like she's learning to communicate mm-hmm. and I mean, that's kind of what art is. If you get down to it, it's a communication tool. So um, that's why I think it's important. I mean, it's important, I think, for all kids to explore something creatively, whether it's music or writing or dance or sports, whatever it is for them to communicate. Yeah. Like, it's it's important for us as humans to build a community. It's essential, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my kid is uh, six months in... And, and change now and uh every time they do like paintings at daycare and they send me pictures he's smiling all the time so i just ordered like kid specific paints yep. he loves it he loves it i don't know oh, why right, they're doing like finger painting yeah stuff. finger painting That's food painting like uh, a, bal- a balloon with paint and just letting him touch the yeah. balloon and just try to paint with the balloon like I, he came home and he was slightly pink on his uh shirt and i'm like why are you pink and then i saw the picture I'm like oh so that's why or like uh, some flower with water and uh, food colorant and they they let them okay. eat it and just paint with whatever they want so yeah i just that's got awesome. him paints because really cool. yeah i don't know if it's related to the fact that he's I, I i do some baby led winning which is letting the kids eat by themselves so i give him like banana and have him try and eat the banana he paints with the banana eats the banana touches everything <laughs> so i don't know might be related might not but it's great yeah. that it's what you said it's great to see that art is such a great way for kids to express themselves and evolve their coordination skills and you know motor skills and stuff like that it's amazing yeah it um is. and you i'm amazed at six months can i just say it's six months that they're already like at daycare that's really great that they're doing that ah thanks yeah he's uh he's artsy and then his dad is like no no here's the keyboard you like keyboards you're going to be a software engineer that is a software engineer <laughs> yeah six months i don't know how much software engineering will be <laughs> just be hitting amazing. hitting keys hitting keys that's fun um there you go. Can you expand a little bit more? You touched a little bit on the subject, but I'd love to know why you think art is so important in this day and time. Um, I would say this is going to sound kind of futurist. It's really important for art to exist because in a world that's further and further machine led Mm -hmm. and AI led and more jobs are based on coding and computing. Yeah. It's really important to do get outside of that world of just the matrix where it's very rigid <laughs> computer like and and have something a little bit more expressive. I feel like um, I've noticed this and I'm surprised by it. There is such a a market for people wanting not just artwork in their homes, but learning how to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. There's a huge market for that. And I don't, whether it's a hobby or therapeutic or whatever it is, so many people want to learn how to draw because they have things they want to express. Mm -hmm. And like if their job of a lot of their jobs are STEM oriented or artificial intelligence based oriented then like this is another this is another way for them to have a cathartic experience or to just express themselves like I think I think it's really important to do that and like the other thing is too is like art in like the general term with a capital a like Mm -hmm. literature music the whole thing that Mm -hmm. encompasses art 
and entertainment. Like think about how big entertainment is in our lives now, especially during COVID. Like, can you imagine what this COVID situation would have been like if there was no Netflix? (laughs) Yeah, I had to rant about that. Like imagine, imagine how crazy people would go if they had nothing to do and no forms of art to experience, like to do, to experience. Like that's just... I know I'd go crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even the furniture in our house has design. You know, it has creative people designing it, everything. Well, I had this rent with Eleanor Mills at one of the earliest podcast interview, And yeah, we went very passionate about it. I'm always happy to find people as passionate about it as I am because it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, we need to, we need to help us spread the word. Guys, get this interview in everybody's hands. Just everybody <laughs> needs to see the value of art. Come on, come on, share, hit the share button. Yeah, uh, like, I mean, just I would, that's the most recent example I can think of is, is like you would. And the other thing is, too, is like imagine how bleak and dreary. I don't know if you've seen the movie Equilibrium. Where yeah, there's like no one like all the art is trying to get purged from the world. Like it doesn't work like yeah. everyone. Everyone needs some sort of creativity. And like even the most basic thing has an art like has an art to it or a design to it. It's like, like our it's just, art is food for the soul you know you cannot yeah. survive only on physical food for your physical body i guess yeah people have been creating art since before there was written language of any kind mm-hmm. like paintings in lascaux and france were predate written language by thousands of years like that was our first form of communication so yeah i think it's pretty important one uh, devil advocates question though what yes. machines do paint you know, monkeys do. do paint. Machines are created by humans. So in a way, machines mm. are are an art form for humans. But yes, monkeys, elephants, and dolphins all paint too. But like, they, they paint because we've given them the painting tools to paint with. So mm. in the wild, I don't think they, they do things like that. Yeah. But they do have creativity. Animals do have creativity. Crows do, ravens do. A lot of other animals have shown creativity in various forms, like mm-hmm. they create tools or um, I, for instance, I just learned this like a couple of years ago, crows actually play for fun. They'll roll around in the snow. Crows and are so crows- intelligent. They freak me out. Yeah. They are really intelligent. They recognize, they recognize individual people's faces. They treat people differently based on that. So like, I think um, the world of animal intelligence and animal creativity is fascinating because we're learning more things about that. And like, it's not just a human urge to create things and it's not just a human urge to be in, like, it's not just a human trait to be intelligent. Mm-hmm. Pigs are very intelligent. Dogs mm-hmm. obviously are very intelligent. So I think, you know, once we think about that, I, I guess it's kind of mind blowing. We can't say that like art, intelligence and creativity are like a totally human thing. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's what if we as I humans like. create machines that will paint for us? Do you think art will ever cease to exist then? I, I've, I've read about this. It's a really interesting question is if, if a machine can paint Van Gogh or Monet, like, is it less valuable? And I would say that from what I've read, it sounds like it would be less valuable mm-hmm. in my because when we when we buy a piece of art or we look at a piece of art or enjoy it in any way, part of it has to do with the author or the creator's story. Like Van Gogh's story, for instance, of him suffering from mental illness and never selling but one painting his entire life. Like that story is the compelling uh, impetus behind his body of work. Mm-hmm. And a machine is creating something even if it looks the same as some other great work it's not the same because yeah, it's, it's a copy and also it's um it there's no there's no story behind it that that we we bought we yeah. enjoy ourselves in. Because, like, think, yeah a lot of the great artists they have compelling stories like michelangelo has a story and like when you look at a michelangelo piece like that's what part of it is is that story and even so. if the machines can make stories that they cannot put emotion in them right no. and emotion I, would, I think is essential that's, that's another question too because like if you watch the show westworld or any of those shows <laughs> like, 
AI becomes its own thing and has its own emotions and story and personality. Like, is it any different than humans? Like that, that question, I don't know. That is like something I think thought about a lot. Yeah. And I, I don't know, since we're not at that point, thank God, like, I can't <laughs> say, well, you know, but like, it's easy for me to now point to it now and say, well, if a machine creates it, it's not the same. Cause it's, yeah. not, it's not, it's a machine doesn't have, you know, a personality or, or any uh, story behind it. But if it ever gets to the point where AI is indistinguishable from humans, I think the other thing, sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm rambling. No, but I love it. The other thing that I've seen, I've read a lot of Harari and he talks about this too. The difference between machines and humans is that machines can live forever. Mm -hmm. and humans can't. Mm -hmm. And like, I've heard that other, that's mortality is what makes our lives meaningful. And yeah. the fact that we have limits is what makes our art important. Like if a machine makes it, it's not the same. It's, it's the kind. It's the same thing that makes a flower so beautiful. It's fleeting. It will fade. Yeah, exactly. And that like what's flower. that what yeah that what gives meaning to life. You know, it's it's fleeting. Yeah, it, it fades. It ends. It ends. Beautiful. So, Never thought about it like yeah, that. It's like in terms of intelligence, I was just thinking of this too. Remember when on Jeopardy, where they had like the world's smartest guy and then they had a computer and the computer beat him and everyone mm -hmm. was like that's it there's no point learning anything else because the machines are smart i don't i don't think people buy into that either you know mm -hmm. i agree so well. <laughs> there's just no point learning anything or going to school because there's a machine out there that can that's smarter than you i don't well. yeah <laughs> okay turning the conversation uh we got the rant out first now i'm just uh <laughs> focusing a little bit on you now Okay, sure. You're you're a professional and you're more focused on watercolor, am I correct? Yeah. And mostly. is your favorite color blue? <laughs> yes. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not watching the video, please go to YouTube and you can see why I just made the assumption that yeah. Anne's favorite color is blue. It's not because it's filled with blue on in your bedroom or anything, right? No. Um, so it's yeah, so a lot of blue. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about that. So what what are your favorite subjects to what what do you do specifically? Um, I love to do nature and landscape scenes. Um, that's mm -hmm. where I get a lot of inspiration. Um, I I like to mix in a little bit of fantasy here and there. Um, so if whenever I have a chance to do anything mythological or fairy tale wise, even though that's more difficult for me because it requires a lot more planning, mm -hmm. and sketching, I really like doing that too. Um, I really feel like when I paint like skies or landscapes or trees or um, anywhere I've traveled, especially that has mm -hmm. meaning for me, it's, it's like, it's like I'm reliving a memory or expressing like my emotional reaction to something mm -hmm. to seeing the beauty of nature, which I really love. So honestly, that's where, that's where I get most of my inspiration or food too. Like <laughs> I, no. I love food. I love eating, so like every mm -hmm. once in a while I'll eat like a creme brulee or... <laughs> Don't, just, come on, it's almost snack time here, don't do that to me. Oh my yeah. goodness. Um, so. And why, I I'm just go look, going over your Instagram, guys, the link for Anne's uh, work is in the post associated with this episode at etrelab.com forward slash Anne K, and um, you can find everything there. As I'm scrolling through your Instagram, I... I know you have, okay, so you have these uh, favorite topics and you also teach, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. What do you love about teaching? I love teaching because I love watching students get, um, learn something new and then feel really satisfied and proud of themselves. I guess it's like the same thing as when you're a parent and you see a kid do something for the first time. Yeah. Like, it's just how happy that makes them. I love doing that. Um, I used to teach when I was in college. I used to be an um, art assistant for summer camps, art summer camps. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just painting and drawing. It was, like, gymnastics and Legos and video, like, creating um, video content. Like, I, I used to do all kinds of art camps. And the kids were just wonderful. And then I've done art workshops with adults and art lessons with adults. And what I really like about doing that is um, uh, it's watching them improve on something they didn't think they could ever do, which mm -hmm. is great. And 
then I like seeing them when they're out in the wild, taking what I've taught them and just applying it. I don't know. It's like, it's like empowering at the same time for me. Cause I feel like, Oh, I actually, I know enough to teach somebody. Do you <laughs> think, I, I feel like I don't have as much confidence. Uh-uh. Unless I'm it, somebody. That's, you know, faults of being human. Again, what makes us so special and not machines. Damn machine. Yeah. Question for you. So you said that you, you like the sensation of seeing them, you know, realize that they can do something they thought they couldn't. So would you mm-hmm. say that art is for anyone who would dare to try? I think so. Um, there's some people who are really convinced that they can't draw. Like my husband is convinced that he can't my draw. My husband and too. Like, honestly, he's because he's never practiced. But yeah. I think there's a hurdle that people are afraid of is that there's all these hours you have to put under your belt before you're any good at it. Mm. And I mean, like, it's in some ways that's like kind of true, but like you can find room to draw and practice drawing anywhere, anytime. I'm telling you when you're on the subway, when you're on the plane, when you're sitting on the phone, or even when you're, I'm not going to recommend this, but if you're on a meeting with your coworkers on zoom, like uh, right here, you can kind of just sketch something and they're taking just notes. Free. No one. Yeah, exactly. No one's really going to know what you're doing, but, um, <laughs> oh but like, I feel like even if it's not, even if it's not painting or drawing, there is some, there is some creative thing that you can do for yourself. You mm-hmm. can scrapbook, you can sculpt, you can, there is something you can do um, for yourself that is creative that you can be good at. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, true for everybody. Have so. you seen any, like, what have you seen that is the biggest hurdle that your students face when trying to learn watercolor? Oh, with watercolor, that's an interesting point. So I would say it's funny. It's like, it depends on the person, but like, in general, I would say um, water control is a big one. Mm-hmm. Like, how much water should be on the brush? How much water should be mixed with the pigment before I put it on the pa- on the paper. Like that is a big one. Um, and that one takes a long, that one takes some time to learn, to learn that. And it's funny, like I tell people this, there is a point, like I, when you practice enough, you'll be able to feel how much water's on your brush based mm-hmm. on how it weighs in your mm-hmm. hand. So and true. it's gonna be like micro, um, milliliters you it, like it's so it's drops of water but you can tell based on its weight how much water is on there and yeah. you can tell sometimes by looking like how saturated the brush is yeah and like that that's a big one for people and i would say another big one is this is something i think people just have no confidence in and that's color mixing mm-hmm. color mixing is like another hurdle um they either they either think they need like 300 colors to really be good at it which you don't you need mm-hmm. like three before or they just like don't they just don't know what to mix and like they don't know uh, how blue the sky needs to be how with skin tones especially too people have a like a lot of reticence on skin tones which i totally understand because skin tones are hard They're very hard but, um, i feel like uh with color with color it's okay to just be bold in the beginning and try your best mm-hmm. and like you know, you, that's the great thing about art is that you can be like, this is how I see it. And this is the color that works for me. Okay. But, um, those are big hurdles as well as, um, uh, I think the other thing is supplies too, is if you, if you get really, really cheap dollar store supplies or like bargain bin, um, paper, you're, it's going to bend and warp really poorly. And you're going to be like, ah, I'm so frustrated with this, you know, never again. Yeah. And then they don't paint. Definitely definitely get some nice paper. Yeah. (laughs) You regret it. (laughs) Extra sketchbooks. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) Kidding. Uh, Not trying to sell our sketchbooks. but Try these postcards too. Oh, we will. We will try them live. Yeah. Yeah. Hot press, extra sketchbooks. By the way, guys, mm-hmm. this is not a sales pitch. This is just me, me, me being silly. But um, something it, free and cool for you. If you're watching this when it's aired. So this episode is airing on November 23rd. And this Friday, we will have Anne as a teacher guest doing a free live demo where you will be doing some watercolor painting, some uh, Christmas botanicals, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. 
So you should totally join. It's free. Yeah. It's fun. We're going to cover some cool watercolor topics. And uh, I'm just trying to find the calendar to figure it out. And water control. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you just quickly just tell us what you're going to do? Sure. Um, I am going to do a wreath and I'm going to go over kind of, it's probably going to be a little bit more of a loose um, interpretation. It's going to look realistic, but um, I'm just going to kind of go over how I do leaves and um, some color mixing things. And I'm going to go over supplies and I'm going to go over tips and tricks to mm -hmm. um, help you make some beautiful Christmas botanicals or any kind of botanicals really. So yeah, that's my goal. <laughs> and you'll be doing those on postcards so you guys can create your own postcards to gift to your loved ones, especially in this time. Placement for holiday cards. Yeah, make exactly. Let's make some holiday cards on November 27th at 4 p.m. LA mm -hmm. time. If you are in a time zone that does not allow you to watch this, like myself in Portugal, it's going to be midnight and I'll be snoring. <laughs> uh, that's totally fine because this will be recorded. Yeah. But uh, I advise you to come watch live if you can. Okay, any last words before we wrap up? Any words of advice to our listeners, to our hobbyists, our watercolor explorers? Mm, I would say I've practice, 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 and don't be afraid to practice. And the other thing I tell everyone, and this is like my million dollar piece of advice, is if you're drawing from life, draw with what your eye tells you, not what your brain tells you. How so? So your brain tells you that the sky is blue and that trees are brown and that leaves are green and that the clouds are white. But mm -hmm. if you look, if you look actually at what you're looking at, clouds can be hundreds of colors. Mm -hmm. The sky isn't always blue. Um, there's sometimes there's green in the sky, believe it or not. Um, tree trunks are not just brown. Just look look and turn off what your brain is telling you because if you just if you just go by what you're seeing by what you're looking at you will actually get a more accurate realistic portrayal of of the world believe it or not just take things for what you see and not what not what you think you should see i guess is my that's my big piece of advice beautiful what do you think will happen to art in the future will it become obsolete were essential. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section of the post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash and K. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash A-N-N-E-K. Like the podcast? Help us support the show by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts at etcherlab.com forward slash go forward slash Apple. See you in the next episode and until then, let's make more art! <laughs>